Hey, this is Alpha for Shock's video guide, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Zerg versus Terran style of play, um, which was very popular in Wings of Liberty and has made a resurgence in Heart of the Swarm, that being a Ling Baneling Muta composition. And we're going to see how this actually works out in Heart of the Swarm. Now, um, one of the key differences in Heart of the Swarm is that with the addition of new Terran units, um, Zerg players aren't really able to do that turtling to Hive that was so popular in Wings of Liberty. Um, they're not able to take third bases as quite as early due to the new Reaper and Widow Mine and Hellion. Um, and so they're being forced to do a little bit more teching off of two base. And we're going to see how that uh, Zerg players have adapted to this in this game. Anyways, we've spawned on uh, Belshir Vestige. And uh, we have our two players in the top left. We have the blue Zerg, whom we'll be following, Quantix Masan, um, obviously a very skilled player. And his opponent in the bottom right, the red Terran Mashiro. Anyways, um, so this map is, of course, a two-player map, which means that uh, scouting information is much easier to come by, considering you only have to go to one location. But I want to point out that Masan is actually going for a 14 spawning pool. Um, a lot of Zerg players might think about going hatch first, but... In this case, Masan has elected to go for spawning pool first. And really, the main difference is that you're a little bit safer against really early sorts of pressures. You get a faster queen. Um, you can get speed earlier if you so choose. And you usually follow this up as Masan is doing with a hatchery at around 16 supply. So 14 spawning pool, 16 supply, very safe, very standard. And Masan's going to be in a good position against whatever sort of pressure um, Mashiro throws out. So there's the spawning pool completing. Um, we see that the hatchery has started for Masan, and we see that he's getting a queen. Now, if we take a look at what Mashiro is doing, he's actually going for a reaper. And this early queen is really going to be extremely helpful against that reaper. A lot of Zerg players are finding that in their old traditional style of play with perhaps delayed queens and low numbers of Zerglings, they're actually... Um, having a Reaper get to their base on a two-player map when they still don't even have um, any units out. So that can be a bit troubling, and it can force you to pull drones, which is something you really don't want to do that often. So this Queen coming out is really going to be very helpful for Masan. So there's the Queen coming out immediately, of course, using it to Larva Inject, and then putting it in a kind of defensive position at the ramp, um, sending it down here. Um, of course, you want to be building another Queen while you do this and then send this one to the natural to uh, inject this hatchery but he's gonna have to pull it back to deal with this reaper he is gonna pull some workers but with decent micro he should be able to preserve almost all of his workers he might take a loss or two um, anyways this queen of course very useful in zoning out that reaper um, as you can see the reaper has killed one drone not a huge deal it did decent damage but nothing serious and we see that Masan is taking his first extractor which is, of course, um, going to be essential for getting Zergling speed. And we're going to see that he actually continues mining from this extractor for a while. Uh, he does pull off briefly, but he's going to resume mining it pretty soon. So another queen coming out for Masan and continuing to pump drones, actually taking, um, oh, canceling the extractor at his natural, uh, and continuing to pump drones and overlords, um, beginning to start his creep spread in his main. Um, and keeping these queens, you know, in a position to deal with this reaper is really helpful. Now that there's a substantial number of queens out, it's much easier to deal with this reaper. Um, it's, you know, maybe going to get a worker here and there, but nothing serious. Um, anyways, continuing to build drones. Uh, really at this point, it's really about maximizing economy, getting that creep spread up and running. As we can see, Masan is spreading creep throughout his base. Um, and of course, some queens are used for larva inject, some for... Uh, creep spread. We see that Zergling speed is now being researched the moment Masan hit 100 gas. He pulled off all the workers off of his extractor except one and then uh, briefly let them mine minerals only to resume uh, mining gas again. And we see that he's taking his third base at the same time. So this is like a pretty decently timed third. It's a little bit after six minutes. 
and uh, it's a lot safer. But I want to point out that Masan is taking both the gases at his natural and the other gas in his main. So he's suddenly putting a lot of effort into getting gas. And this Reaper is going to scout the gas being taken, which isn't the greatest for Masan. But at the same time, uh, a bunch of Hellions are actually going to run in to the natural of Masan, and he's kind of skimped out on Zerglings. I would recommend when doing this build to invest in a couple more Zerglings in this if you open pool. First, it's, it's usually a good idea to actually get a few Zerglings just to zone out Hellions like this and have some DPS to take them out because Maslan actually did lose quite a few drones there. He is making more and Zergling speed is about to finish, but still it's always uh, not a good thing to lose drones to Hellions. Anyways, morphing Lair now at around the 7 minute 45 second mark, um, continuing to mine gas. Now the natural is a little bit unsaturated now, so there's not much gas being mined there, but... The main is mining gas and uh, creep continuing to be spread. Now moving it onto the map with these zerglings and saturating these gas geysers. Obviously these gas geysers are very important since Masan is electing to saturate them even with an unsaturated mineral field here. Putting down a baneling nest. Now this is where the build really starts to develop. I mean at some point as we can see zerglings sort of cease to be effective um, against hellions and marines. I mean they can trade okay but um, you're sort of not really ever going to make much headway as the Terran continues to get upgrades, continues to um, produce units and macro up and get a larger force of marines because the surface area kind of gets reduced. Um, throwing down double evolution chambers to wall off with this queen is a good idea. Scouting the Hellions, not entirely sure if that's going to be attempted again, but it's a good move for Masan. And we also see that he's adding a spire um, to transition into muta play which is of course a very good idea for keeping Terrans contained. Uh, it also is helpful for dealing with drops. Um, you can snipe Medivacs with those Mutalisks. And we see that he is getting plus one armor from this evolution chamber and plus one melee attack from this evolution chamber. So really starting to power into that um, double upgrade kind of style, upgraded Zerglings and Banelings along with Mutalisks on the way. Um, this third base now getting saturated. It's got its queen there. Um, and just, you know, waiting for the Spire to finish, now getting Banelink speed. And from here, Masan is really going to transition into a Zergling, Baneling, Mutalisk army. And the goal of this composition is really to just consistently trade cost efficiently with the Terran and then rely on Larva Inject to continue powering um, through units. Uh, not necessarily Banelink since they have to be morphed, but keeping that Mutalisk pack alive. Uh, we see now that Masan is taking his 5th and 6th gas to you know, augment his mutilisk production. Because um, it is rather expensive for gas to uh, get double upgrades, banelings, and mutilisks, along with banelink speed. But, you know, that's why we need this fifth and sixth gas. And from here, just continue um, preserving army, trading away zerglings and banelings for marines and marauders, and then using mutilisk to keep the medevac count low, using mutilisks to harass and keep the Terran darting around the map is really the way you want to play this style. And from here, Masan can transition into a standard kind of macro position. So I hope you enjoyed this build. Feel free to check out our existing library of strategies, tips, and more, and we'll see you next time.